Hi, my name is Becky Jennings, and this is the Response Able Parenting Podcast. I give you the transformational tools to stop reacting to your children in the moment and start responding with intention. Before we dive into the episode, I want to share my free guide to managing our kids' meltdowns. We know that meltdowns are normal, but they still suck and can be ridiculously triggering. This four-step free guide will help you break the cycle of reactivity and help you get through the meltdown without snapping yourself. Don't join your kid in the tantrum. Grab my free guide and learn how to manage meltdowns like a pro. Head to responseableparenting.ck.page forward slash meltdown, or just go and click the link in my show notes and get your guide today. Okay, let's get to the episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Responsible Parenting. My name is Becky Jennings. I am your host, and I'm going to throw it back to my therapy years. Um, I actually started therapy for the very first time when I got pregnant with my youngest son, Trey. Um, I had had a full-term stillbirth between him and my oldest. Um, I had lost my son around 38 and a half weeks pregnant. He was my healthiest pregnancy. He was my biggest pregnancy. I had been in labor for about five days with him. And then um, the contractions were just too infrequent, too all over the place, too intense. And his little body couldn't handle it. And unfortunately, my middle son Jackson did not make it through labor. And so I ended up delivering him stillborn in 2019. So I started my therapy journey in 2019. And it was, you know, really geared towards helping me cope. So we really spent a long time unpacking my relationship with should, my expectations, how I can operate in a world that feels so cruel and feels so unfair, also how to build systems and strategies into my own life so I could continue to parent the living child that I had in my own home. And then additionally, you know, when you're in the middle of unpacking things and wounds and all of this stuff, you're going to be able to talk about all of your other interpersonal relationships and how they affect you. One of the best parts about therapy is you really get to dive into your part of interpersonal relationships. And because of the nature of interpersonal relationships, family, siblings, parent, child dynamics, partners, those are going to be kind of like the breeding ground for learning all of these skills because you have so many opportunities <laughs> to practice in conflict. And one of the things, and I was in therapy for a couple of years with her, um, one of the things that stood out to me the most, and it was probably in the very beginning, so probably 2019 or 2020, that we were discussing this. And it is still a phrase I use today because it made so much sense to me. And I was talking about something that was going on with either my son or my husband. I can't remember now um, what the actual topic was, but she said, as humans, we do this thing where we point the finger at somebody else. And we say to that person, essentially by criticizing, by shaming them, by yelling at them, by being defensive, by being critical, whatever it is, we're essentially pointing our fingers at them. And we are saying to them in so many words, you need to change in order for me to feel more comfortable. And that struck me as, whoa, it was such a profound statement you change so that I can feel better. Because what we tend to do and what we tend to specifically do as parents, especially when we're feeling dysregulated, especially when we're feeling like a situation is too big for us to handle, especially when we're out of our window of tolerance and we don't feel like we have the skills to cope. We don't feel like we have the energy to get down and play. We don't feel like we can do it effectively, we essentially shut down the moment, shut down the feeling, and we say to our child, you need to change in order for me to feel more comfortable. And why am I talking about this? Because it is so much easier 
to blame somebody for your problems. It is so much easier to make it somebody else's job in order to make the situation easier, better, more comfortable. It is so much easier to correct unwanted behavior. It is so much easier to do all of these things than to turn inward and say, I'm uncomfortable in this situation. What about this, un this situation is making me uncomfortable? What does that feel similar to from my past? How can I connect the dots to what happened in the past to what's happening now? What type of scaffolding or what type of systems do I need to put in place in order for me to not feel this way? What type of healing do I need to do around topics and these certain moments that pop up in my parenting on a regular basis? What can I do internally to create more capacity, to be able to hold more, to be able to tolerate more? These are all questions that are really hard to answer because it requires a tremendous amount of introspection. It requires work. It requires effort. It requires feeling uncomfortable, uncomfortable feelings. It requires going back into painful wounds that we have probably compartmentalized and put on a shelf. And we've said to ourselves, we're never going to touch that again. And by pointing at somebody else and saying, that is something that is far too uncomfortable for me. I don't want to feel that feeling again. So I'm going to put the focus on your behavior so that you can change so that I don't actually have to do the work to feel better myself. And see, I believe that once we have the awareness that there is a certain situation, there's a certain pattern or moment or sensation that happens around certain topics or certain moments, it is our job as the sturdy parent. It is our job as the parent who is really devoted to breaking cycles, really devoted to changing patterns and really devoted to this conscious, responsive, gentle, thoughtful, attached style of parenting, it's actually our job to go, hmm, this isn't actually a you thing. This is a me thing. This is a thing that has probably been impacting all of my relationships from the beginning of this, you know, one moment. And this is actually put, I've been viewing all of my relationships through this lens and I've been protecting myself with all these defensive mechanisms. I've been protecting myself by keeping people at arm's length. I've been protecting myself in so many different ways by making it other people's problems versus just saying, I actually probably need to address this. I need to go in and heal the wound. I need to create some sort of narrative around this moment that happened to me so that I can understand it. And, and the thing about this is it's not that you have to go in and fully miraculously heal and get over it and move on and it's never a part of your life anymore. What we can do for these really painful pockets of our lives is what we can do is create what's called a cohesive narrative. And a cohesive narrative is just being able to understand all angles of it, being able to understand the context of it, the vulnerabilities, the power, the structure around the moment, so that we can start to remove some of the amplified energy and sensations and take some of the power out of the moment. Because every single time we allow ourselves to get sucked back into these patterns, we're giving our power to the pattern. We're giving our power away to the reactivity. But if we can take some time, unpack why we are feeling the way we feel in certain moments, as opposed to pointing the finger outward and saying, all of you guys are doing it wrong. I'm fine over here. You need to change in order for me to feel good. Instead, we say, what about the situation doesn't feel good to me? And then let's go through and do the untangling and do the rewiring so that we can actually still be in these exact same situations, but not feel the magnitude, not feel that amplification of the trigger because we've understood the context around the trigger. We've understood why that trigger was so powerful and held so much of us captive for so long. And then we can begin the process of release 
releasing that power and regaining a sense of safety and security within our own bodies so that we have the ability to witness the situation, the moment in front of us, instead of absorbing it and taking on and adding even more power to the previous moment that felt so similar that is driving our reaction in the present moment. So when you find yourself in a repetitive pattern with people in your household, could be your kids, could be your spouse, could be people that you're working with, when you find yourselves in these repetitive patterns, instead of just immediately saying in your head, basically, oh my gosh, it's this person's fault. They need to change. They need to grow up. They need to get more skills. They need to do, 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 do. You can sit and say, I'm not in control of other people's responses. I can't force them to do anything. If I'm uncomfortable, then what that's telling me is I'm also responsible for figuring out how I can be in this dynamic with less discomfort. I'm not saying you're going to overhaul everything and feel totally magically comfortable in all of these situations, but it's about learning why, creating a cohesive narrative around that moment so you have a deeper understanding of really the full picture and then building protective mechanisms, building better communication, building skills, support, and scaffolding around those moments so that they don't overtake you, so they don't overpower you in the moment so that you can actually stay authentically in who you want to be in those moments. You can show up as the conscious, responsive, gentle, connected, attached parent that you want to be, even though you're feeling discomfort. Now it goes from dis from danger, from threat, from overwhelm to discomfort. And we can manage discomfort when we have the supportive skills in place. So I hope that's a, a good reframe for you. I hope that's a really interesting way to kind of switch up our repetitive patterns. And I hope the next time that you find yourself like falling right into the exact same pattern that we know so well, that we've been there so many times, you go, oh my gosh, this is exactly what she was talking about. This is me saying, you need to change in order for me to feel better. And then go write that down, write that moment down, write that feeling and sensation down, get it all out on paper so that you can start to really look at the nuance of it and say, why, why is this triggering me in the way that it's triggering me? And what can I put in place to help me feel more comfortable? Whether that's working with me as your coach so that we can unpack this full picture and really see what that looks like working alongside of a therapist, joining my community group, whatever would really give you that scaffolding and support, find that for yourself. Because oftentimes if we just go, you know, to our same echo chambers, our same friends, and we get the same validation, the problem isn't solving. So we need to go outwards and we need to seek that support so we can really drill it down and figure out what's going on and actually make changes in the direction to feel more comfortable so that we can actually feel better without forcing everybody around us to change. Thank you again for being here for another week, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for listening to the Response Able Parenting Podcast. If you like what you heard, please take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe. If you know someone who would benefit from this podcast, I'd be honored if you'd share this episode with them. Until next time, know that you are enough, you are capable, You've made it through all of your hardest days, and we will keep growing on this parenting journey together. This podcast was produced by Kim Kelty and myself, Becky Jennings, and edited by The Kelty Method, Branding and Podcasting.